Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and today we are taking a look at Franklin D. Roosevelt Tier 10 American Carrier available soon for 33,000 steel. So I guess the big question, is she a good ship? Should you pick her up? Is she strong? You know, what's her shtick? Um, well, first things first, just so you're aware. Um, when I collected this footage, I actually uh, had zero of the upgrade modules. And the reason I had none of them is because I actually thought I'd set the ship up and then apparently I didn't or I think maybe somewhere along the line the ship got removed and put back in and it removed all of my modules. So this is basically a no module ship. So with a module, she will be that little bit better um, in terms of many different factors. Uh, one other thing, of course, is this is a replay. Um, and so there are weird things that happen with CV replays. So one of the things is like the UI might disappear somewhere along the line, or at least some of the elements of the UI might disappear. So yeah, just forgive me if that happens. All right, let's talk about the ship. Oh yeah, there it goes. It, it's disappeared. You notice how the speed and the thing's gone? Yeah, okay. So what is this ship's uh, thing primarily? Well, her thing is the fact that she has... Uh, aircraft that carry a lot of ordnance. So this is the rocket planes. They Once they fire, you'll see the amount of rockets that come spewing out. It is a lot of rockets. And these rockets actually have decent penetration. So they can actually hurt things, notably cruisers. If you're a cruiser and this thing smacks you, ouch. If you're a 32mm plated battleship and this thing smacks you, ouch. Um, so yeah, it, the rockets hurt. But her planes aren't particularly fast. And after attack, it takes a long time for you to get another one. Her planes are super durable. They have like a significant chunk more survivability than any other CV aircraft in the game. But like I said, they are slow and they're relatively large squadrons and you can eat flak. Oh, and also did I mention that um, if you get caught by an enemy CV's uh, fighter planes, it is really hard to get away from them, meaning that even if the CV were to, let's say, drop the fighter squadron sort of last second or whatever, by the time it takes you to actually complete your attack run and get your drop off, um, you can't escape from the CV's fighters and you will lose significant aircraft. And of course, because of the design of this CV, her planes don't really recharge all that super quickly. And it's actually pretty hard to try to conserve them because, you know, if you notice, every time you try to pre-drop, First of all, you only get rid of two aircraft and the, you know, the recharge timer is just forever. So she's got these notably not super fun elements, shall we say? Uh, the long sort of recharge timer, the slow airplanes, these aren't particularly fun. However, if in the situation you get a single enemy target, so like a single ship that's isolated or whatever, Franklin D. Roosevelt will end your day, period. This ship will just end end you because she has so much capability of wrecking a solo ship because you can't shoot down the planes fast enough they have so much bulk and they can literally just keep coming back time after time after time again like every 25 seconds or whatever and hitting you uh the torpedo bombers for example will drop eight torpedoes now the damage of these torpedoes are lower per torpedo than midway um so you know but if you still take eight of them you're still eating a sizable chunk of damage her dive bombers hurt like all hell, and her rocket planes, like I said, uh, they can also hurt you. So if you get focused by one of these things, watch the hell out because you're going to have a really, really bad day. So against a Franklin D. Roosevelt, don't get caught solo, basically. Uh, if you are a destroyer, however, with especially an A spec destroyer, like a Holland or something like that, you're generally going to have a slightly better time. Um, and the main reason is because the rocket planes are, I mean, they dish out a lot of rockets, but the problem is that, um, first of all, like I said, the planes are really slow, so it takes them a long time to actually, you know, turn around and re-engage or whatever. But the bigger issue is that the rocket reticle, like normal CV reticles, when you, like, engage them, they start closer to your planes and then they move out and, then you know, they focus. The... Uh, frankly, the Roosevelt ones, like they kind of zoom in from a distance and they come backwards towards the zoom point. It's a little bit of a weird rocket reticle. It's not super good against destroyers since their destroyers start to be a little bit more last minute type engagements. And this is just not the thing. You really do need a bit of a run up with the uh, FDR's uh, rocket planes. The dive bombers though, uh, if you take hits from these things, you're going to be taking some pain. Uh, if they hit you with all uh, the bombs that this ship has, 
you could be looking easily into like the 22,000 range uh, in damage. It hurts and multiple fires typically. The bombers really, really, really hurt. So again, in this particular battle, the reason why I'm having such a good time per se is that most of the battleships are reasonably isolated away from each other. Like this GK, like, oh, this GK. This GK isn't even really doing anything. I don't even think he's really moving here. Um, so I'm going to be able to come in here and I'm going to have a pretty good drop here. This is probably going to be close to all the bombs dropping and hitting. So yeah, that's going to be a full hit. So take a look at that. I go from 68,000 damage to 94,000 damage with two fires. <laughs> the bombers are no joke. They do come in a little bit sort of like... Um, Audacious's sort of level bombers. They're not like, you know, the normal USN ones where the planes dive down. The, the planes kind of go down and they enter a bit of a level bombing flight and then they drop their bombs. But it still hurts like hell. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, they're they're really like it's FDR is just a really good sort of single target type CV. Um, and it is also frustrating if you're a surface ship because unlike some CVs, this one, you might not be seeing a lot of plane kills. Uh, the, you, you could just get attacked and then see nothing. You might even get attacked a second time and see like one airplane shot down. The, the planes are durable to that extent where they will take a lot of punishment. Now, ideally what you want is to have friends. Now, if you, the more like continuous DPS you can stack, the more flak you can stack, the easier it is for you to be able to shoot down some airplanes or maybe not you, but your allies because the flak is really the only thing that FDR is really worried about because her planes are slow and, you know, kind of flak is the big threat, you know, and you have a big squadron. If you eat flak, it hurts. You will lose airplanes. But if you're just talking about traditional like continuous DPS, like you can take a lot of that continuous DPS damage. Even now, I'm still not a fan of that attack timer. There's just something about you know, this really slow airplane combined with this, this like really painfully slow attack timer recharge. It's just, it's not that great. Um, just, I don't know. There's, there's something about that that just doesn't gel with me. I prefer faster aircraft just so I can do more of other things as well, including like spotting and defensive duties and whatnot. Oh, by the way, the rocket planes on this aircraft have no fighters. So you actually are entirely unable to defend yourself your teammates, your own planes from another fighter. It's just another one of those things. The rockets are super effective against cruisers though. So if you're a cruiser and you see an FDR coming for you, watch the hell out because this thing, no joke, um, can ignore your AA to a large extent, fly through some of the craziest things and then come and hit you. And they can hit you so hard that, yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, as an example, especially if you play like a tier 10 game, you know, let's say I was in, I was in a game the other day and, uh, the enemy team had a Hindenburg. Hindenburg just started the game. My first rocket plane came over and went, oh, look, there's a Hindenburg. First clap, 10k. Turn around, second clap. It's like 11k with fires. Hindenburg took like 20,000 damage in like the first, like two strikes. Literally decided, nope, I'm not playing this anymore. Like turned around and started noping to the north. Like that's the effect that the rocket planes can have on you know, a tier 10 cruiser. And it's just, yeah. Um, against individual single targets, really, really strong. Against super bunched up ships, she does begin to suffer a little bit. And she doesn't actually suffer because of the AA per se. It's more sometimes the flak that you get caught by because your planes are too damn slow to avoid and dodge. And more so the problem is uh, catapult fighters. N not one catapult fighter, but a grouped bunch of catapult fighters. So we have like three or four ships together and they've all got a catapult fighter. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Um, your planes are too slow. Like I said, they can't really get away from anything. Um, you know, even when you're like just attacking, you're actually on your way in. Um, if the catapult plane comes down, you know, sometimes you just, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to eat that uh, loss. Um, you'll see this one uh, incident in this one where a CV dropped a fighter. I couldn't see it at all. Engaged into my attack run. Suddenly they appeared. And then, like, watch how many planes I lost in that squadron. So it's really not so great because of that speed. Um, and it is kind of painful. I would probably recommend, no joke, because of how durable the planes are by themselves normally, that on the sixth slot of the ship, you actually want to take the speed module, which is, I know it's kind of a weird suggestion, but I'd actually think the speed module would actually work just because, you know, buffing the HP more doesn't really make much of a difference anymore. You're so darn durable. You might as well actually just go a bit faster. 
So that could be something to consider as well. But yeah, it's just it's one of those uh, it's one of those carriers. You know, it is just legit one of those carriers that. I mean, look at this. Like, it just doesn't matter. I'm flying through a Nevsky, uh, flying into a Thunder A, and it's just like, sure, I'll come bomb you. Then I'll turn around and I'll bomb the other guy. This is kind of the attitude. Like, even if it's two versus one, not really enough. Like, it really has to be multiple, 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 you know, surface ships stacked together. Um, enemy CVs can counter FDR just with really kind of smart, intelligent type uh, fighter drops. If they can put a fighter in, like, the right place at the right time, uh, FDR can suffer from that, and you will see that a little bit later on. But yeah, you just, like, kek. <laughs> I, I did take a flat cloud there, too, but I still got that drop-off, and it is no joke the amount of damage you can put out. Plane conservation, you probably have to do some of it, um, so that means, like, some plane conservation is probably okay. By the way, 181,000 damage after not fully 12 minutes yet, so that's not bad at all, actually. Um, uh, what else? The inability at times for her to really go after DDs is a bit of a shortcoming. Um, yeah, her dive bombers can do it. Yeah, her rocket planes can sort of do it. Um, but it's not that ease of doing it, I guess, that, that, that really helps, right? And the fact that, again, these planes are super slow is not particularly conducive. Oh, by the way, uh, I think I'm going to get a good drop here. I think I don't, I don't remember if I get a good drop here. Might have. Oh, that was an okay drop. Yeah, four bombs. Yeah, some more damage. Yeah, some damage. <laughs> the bombs hurt. They really, really hurt. And um, yeah, you can see it. it's like two BBs just popping their AA off and it's like nothing really working. <laughs> um, but there is going to be a weakness and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I am going to show it to you. And, and a CV, like an, especially an enemy CV with faster airplanes that does master the counter, um, FDR is going to have a bit of a rough day. Just because if the CV keeps coming around and dropping fighters here and there and predicts your movement or whatever, um, those fighters can be very painful for an FDR. Just because it's like, you know, you can't run away. <laughs> Once they come after you, you're not getting away. But then again, that's, I guess, just how the surface ship feels. So I guess that's all fair, right? Because, you know, it's not like the surface ship can get away from you either, you know. Try as they might, they are going to eat damage. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I like, I, I I like the ship in the sense that yeah, you know, like she can really uh, hurt some things. But I also hate the ship. Just there's something about the conceptual design of a ship that is, you know, got planes that are so durable, that are so able to just, just I don't know, resist almost everything from the surface. That it just, I don't know, it just, it really messes with the surface ships. Okay, so I, I, I sort of didn't get the best drop there. Okay, because that fighter uh, locked on. Okay, so this is the next part, and this is the part that I want you to pay attention to. Because this part's actually kind of interesting, I think, if I remember correctly. I think I do come in here with the rockets. All right, so pay attention to this one, because there's something interesting that's going to happen in this one. Because um, you'll notice that, like, to my knowledge, right, the last time I went uh, after the Thunderer, the fighters locked on. So there should not be any fighters anymore, right? Okay, watch what happens in the next one, because either something weird happened there, or it was just some kind of weird bug, or I don't know what it was. But so th there's the MVR's rocket planes. Okay, so I don't see anything. I don't see the MVR doing anything. It looks like he's just going after another target. So the Thunderer dies, and I think, okay, I'm going to go after the Suzumo here. Nothing's shown up on my screen, like nothing. I see absolutely nothing. And then just watch this, because these planes are so painfully slow, right? Once you commit, here's what happens. So I commit into the attack, and I'm now going into the attack animation, and then suddenly there's a fighter there. Yep, you just can't get away from this. This is impossible to get away from. Like, and then watch the plane losses, right? Watch the plane loss. Here's a squadron. Watch the plane losses. Yeah. The planes are slow. And being as slow as they are, they have problems. If if the enemy CV pays like a fraction of the attention to come over and drop a fighter plane at like the right times, I mean, FDR can get caught and lose aircraft at a tremendous rate. And that rate of loss is unsustainable for FDR. She just doesn't regenerate aircraft at, you know, that amazing tick rate, you know. Um, and so, yeah, in a nutshell, that's uh, FDR, her you know, sort of strengths and weaknesses, you know, heavily armed airplanes, tons of ordnance, 
can do a metric ton of damage against a solo target. Very durable airplanes that can take a lot of punishment, um, which is nice. But then she's also got a ton of weaknesses. You know, the attack timer sucks. The slow airplanes, really, really terrible thing. Like, I just hate slow airplanes. Because the slow airplanes also prevent you from defending your own team as well. Because your planes are so painful and so slow in that sense, like, you cannot just say, right, I'm going to come over here, defend my own team, and then go attack something. Because by the time your planes get over to where your team is, well, whatever attack they were under is probably complete already you know and and so there's no way to get anywhere to defend anything and also if you're playing the cv you're you're constantly making this like judgment call which is like should i really go waste like a minute and a half going over there dropping one fighter which only lasts so long and only does so much or should i just keep attacking i hope that like the amount of damage i output is greater than what the enemy can that's literally what you're doing with fdr it's like a damage race with this thing you know, you're trying to damage race the other CV. If you can do more damage and kill more of their important stuff, then great. You probably will win the game. If you don't damage race hard enough, you... Yeah, you just have very few abilities to win. That's just... Ah. 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 This, this ship. FDR is, is one of those ships. It is one of those ships that I am very... About... <laughs> oh this is this is this is one of those ships mm. yeah she's got she's got you know things that make her really strong in some situations but in some situations she can be incredibly incredibly frustrating to play now the funny thing about this one is is now that the ship is here what is the impact on clan battles <laughs> there's another question i can't exactly answer right away because clan battles require you know intelligent positioning it requires you to be smart with where you're supposed to go yeah. Imagine something that just goes right. You're trying to position somewhere. I don't care. <laughs> I, I I can fly through all of your AA and come and bomb you anyways. Like, you know, I don't know. Clan battles, uh, ranked, whatever. If it's tier 10, you know, just what can the CV do? Just in terms of contribution, I, I don't know. It, it can do quite a lot against single targets. And, you know, in, in modes where I think that there's more... Like trying to uh, put yourself into flanks or whatever, and you know, uh, positionally trying to play smart, the CV just kind of makes you throw that out the window. You know, maybe uh, ever more heavy Russian builds with lots of Russian ships together, and just you know, try to put up enough AA to kill you. Yeah, because like yeah, you know, that, that Nevsky, you know, his AA didn't do much. Oh, okay. See, again, against the Richthofen, it's the fighters that are going to do things. Like, the fighters are going to come in and, and kind of ruin my day. But, you know, I'm still going to be able to get in here against, and get the drop off. So, that's good. I'm going to probably pick up a bit more damage here. And that's pretty much it. Um, I end up the game here with about, what's it, 240,000 damage, I think? Yeah, 241,000 damage game. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so now that you guys have seen FDR... What do you think? You know, do you think you're gonna get her? Do you think you're gonna pass on her? Let me know in the uh, comment section below what your opinions are. Um, you know, all in all, she is a strong ship uh, in terms of her ability to put out damage. Uh, she is also good at her job, but she has notable weaknesses too, which can be exploited, but it just really depends on if people can actually figure it out. And there's probably going to be a large population of players who are just not going to figure that out. And if you're on the receiving end of this, it is going to hurt. And final result screen, 244,711 damage, 33 torpedo hits, you know, a whole bunch of bomb hits, most of it, uh, nine fires as well, you know. So most of the damage targeted towards the large battleships, which means that in terms of base experience, I'm not going to be top of the team here. So well, I was still a comfortable third there. In this particular battle, uh, enemy Richthofen also did a ton of work, uh, even though that was not the world's best player, to keep that in mind. Good distribution of damage between the bombs, torpedoes, the rockets, and damage over time. Uh, and there we go. Uh, without the premium account, 179,000 credits. So at least I was in the positive there. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, take care, be safe, and I'll talk to all of you again next time.